Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, in today's diabolical episode, we're going to be having a look at the, the rear brake shoes. Now, I've had an issue with the uh, handbrake not uh, working 100%. It's when I'm on a hill, it's busy sliding back. So I, what I'm thinking is happening is that uh, the brake adjusters, the brake shoes need adjustment. And we have to do that via the brake adjusters at the back. So, so without any further ado, let's have a look at that. Okay, first thing we need to do, um, guys, is to remove our drum now my drums are reasonably good condition um, and as i can see here the handbrake is down and there's nothing happening uh, okay i'm gonna just i'm just gonna pull up the handbrake now to see which drum is actually slipping before we do anything okay pull them up okay he's tight i'm gonna go around to the other side now the other side Yeah, he's tight as well. But now what we have to remember is that we don't have the wheels on. The wheels add a lot of weight to the actual uh, drum itself. So that will, that will definitely push it forward. But I am finding that it's slipping, so I need to investigate. So let's investigate. So the first thing I'm going to do is to remove the drum. Now you'll see we've got the small little screw here which holds it in place, never over tighten the screw guys, hand tight, that's it. If you strip the screw, it's going to mean hours of trying to get this little screw out to get this drum, this drum off. Put your screw somewhere safe. So when you're taking your drum off, you might find that your drum is a little bit jammed up on the actual uh, brake shoes now it does happen uh, depending upon the condition of your drum and uh, once again guys this video is about this vehicle your vehicle might be different but this is just a guide basic guide to try and assist you when you are doing your vehicle so let's see so what we do is take a, a screwdriver push him in one side if you find that you are struggling to get the screwdriver in there or you're not moving the drum then i would suggest start banging on the drum with a hammer just to loosen him up a little bit. In this case, my drum is coming loose. I'm just loosening him at equal points, bottom and top. Yeah, he's moving. I can see that he's moving. Let's just take that out of the way for now. He's moving out. Because you don't want to damage this plate here. You just want to keep loosening him slowly but surely. It's coming loose because over time I've I've uh, made sure that I'm using the copper antisys grease underneath, which is very important. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. Now I think we've discovered a different problem, and the problem we've discovered, if you have a closer look, you'll see it's wet. Look at this, it's wet here. That means that this uh, cylinder here has packed up. The seals have gone and the liquid, uh, the seals have gone and the brake fluid is busy pushing out. You can see how wet it is there, and that, that's really the problem right now. We're going to do the other side now and just check what's happening on this side. So, hopefully, this side is still. Um, okay, there's no leaks on this side. Let's hope for the best on that. Uh, let's see. Let's loosen them up. There we go. Okay, this one is dry, but he's just got a lot of dirt on him, that's all. So that's a great sign. That's fantastic. So we're just going to clean off the excess here, a good brake cleaner will clean this off very easily. Yeah, he looks dry, the brake cleaner is drying very fast and you can see the actual cylinder itself is dry so we don't have an issue there so we don't need to worry about this one he's fine he may just need some some adjustment so we're going to leave that for now and we'll return to the the other side with the leaky uh, brake cylinder 
All right, um, guys, let's clean up this uh, this brake shoes, this brake mechanism. So, guys, what I'm using here now is uh, is a decreasing all-purpose cleaner, and this one you can get from uh, uh, Opal Man. He's on on TikTok. He's on YouTube. You can get it from him. Um, I'm not sure the costing. I know it's somewhere in the region of about just over 200 rand for a five liter. You can buy it as a five liter like this, and uh, it works very well. It's, it's excellent. Um, so for this uh, brake fluid infested uh, brake housing, we're going to see how well it cleans it out. But uh, yeah, I just put it into a small little bottle like this. Uh, no, this is not paraffin, guys. This is this is not paraffin. Um, it's the the Opal Man cleaner. Uh, the paraffin you're going to see in the next video coming up in one of the videos uh, to do with the cylinder and uh, but don't worry about it we'll cover that soon okay back to the cleaning process here we're just going to throw some water over that and all we're trying to do here is to remove the, the most amount of brake fluid and dust that's now accumulated in here and look at that wow it's actually worked very well it's yeah wow wow that's fantastic yeah, it's cleaned it up very nicely we nice. can clean off our brake drum same procedure let's just spray it because it's also going to be filled with brake fluid we don't want to waste our our, uh, our brake cleaner in the can so let's just get this nice and clean just spray the whole thing Okay, that's a lot better, a lot better inside. We'll, we'll give it some brake clean before we put it back on, but that's looking much better now. Okay, so what we need to do now is we're going to replace the hydraulic cylinder. Uh, yeah, I just got the part corp one, um, this being the, the part number. So a part corp. You can get really any make of these. Um, I don't think it's going to be too serious or what quality of part you get. Um, so we're going to have to replace that guy. This seems to be the one that we need. It needs to be the same size. Always just make sure it's the right thing. And yeah, first thing we're going to need to do is to loosen the nut at the back, which is a 10 spanner, which uses a 10 spanner. And then of course the nipple at the back can use an 8 spanner. So let's do that. Okay, first thing we want to do, we want to loosen up the nipple. Now what's probably going to happen is, we're going to get some, we're going to get some brake fluid coming out here. Just have your cloth ready, so it doesn't squirt on anything you don't want it to squirt on. We're going to loosen the nipple. Once the nipple is loose, we can just turn him out. Perhaps have a little container at the bottom to catch a brake fluid. Okay. Nipple is out. That's what the nipple looks like. Loosen up. I'm going to just dry that off. Loosen up the pipe. And that's going to be a thin spanner. And make sure you're turning the right way, guys. You don't want to turn the wrong way. Loose is lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. And we're just going to loosen him up here. Right, he's loose. And now he'll just come out here. That's what he looks like when he's out. Now we've got the bulk to loosen here. I think that's also an eight. Let's make sure. Yeah, eight. Let's loosen him up. Yeah, there we go. Loosen him up. He's loose. And the hydraulic piston comes loose. Simple as that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just remove this string. Uh, it's holding the tension on the brake shoes, which is obviously pushing on this as well. So we want to re we want to actually just uh, release that tension on this. So I just use a screwdriver. There are special tools, but uh, guys, today I'm not going to worry with special tools. We're just going to do it like we always do it. Just loosen. There we go. It just pops off. And that's that. 
keep your springs and all your fittings in the right place but at least now you've removed the tension uh, from the you've removed the tension from the hydraulic cylinder that's what we want to do just move him out of the way slightly don't loosen them too much and we're going to take out that hydraulic cylinder loosen up the nut here the back and out it comes and there we go that's what it looks like exactly the same like the other one should be the same yep it's similar it's not exactly the same it's similar but let's hope that it works should work let's see if it fits and that's your new nipple as well which you can take out Take out your new nipple. There we go, put him on side. And now we can see if he's gonna fit in. Yeah, he fits there. Let's see if our screw, if our bolt at least, fits in the other side. We can tighten him up now. Just hand tight in a little bit. I think we're looking at about eight Newton meters there. But I think with hand tight, that's very much more than is necessary. So what you want to do is, you just want to turn the pipe fitting by hand and once it's in, and then turn it tight. What's well, very important guys is to manipulate this pipe as you're turning it because you don't want to cross thread that fitting because if you do that then you're going to have more issues. So just carefully, gently, don't force it. Make sure you've got play on your pipes. Like if I, if I move the pipe up and down like this I can feel that I can turn him even more by hand and that's what you really want because you'll go a little bit faster and then we can tighten him further. Here we go, he's tight. Now we're just going to tighten him up. Approximately 8 Newton meters to tighten that one. And we're going to bring in our new nipple. There we go, it's tight. That should be enough for now. Okay, so now we're just going to use our brake clean. Let's get off that nasty old brake cleaner there. Or brake fluid at least. Okay, that should do it. And yeah, we're going to put back our spring now. Just clean it off. Our spring goes in the back there, and then we're going to pull him over. Now what we need is a very thin screwdriver, but I'm going to try, I'm going to attempt to do him with this one. And he goes over there. Like that, there we go. Done. Just make sure he's clearing everything. So what we're going to do next now is we're going to, uh, firstly, I'm going to bleed the brakes. Now in order to do that, we need to put the drums back on. And we need to make sure the other side is clean. I've already cleaned the other side, but I'm just going to make sure that the drum is clean and that we put the, the brake drums back, back on again. And then after that, we're going to bleed it and then we're going to set it again after that. Okay, so what we're doing next, guys, is just going to clean out the other drum quickly. We're going to use the multi-purpose open and cleaner again. I think we're good to go. Okay, so we're gonna do this side's breakdown. We've done the other side now already. Uh, this one we have cleaned him. It's looking good and clean. The surface is looking clean. So let's put it on. So what you want to do is want what the way you put it on is there's a small screw hole which is the same as that one. 
Yeah. And you want to just line it up. Just use your eye to line it up. Here we go. Yeah. And if you check him, you'll see all our holes are, are lined up there. And what we'll just do for now is put in our, our screw, a small screw. Make sure it goes in properly. Here we go. And now we're going to bleed the brakes. And we'll do, we'll start with this one, which is technically the furthest one from the actual, uh, uh, the actual uh, brake, uh, brake reservoir. So um, we'll start with him first and, and he's also the problem one that we're dealing with today. I'm going to remove, uh, or at least we're going to open up our reservoir. And you need to make sure that you've got enough brake fluid in here. If I check it here, I can see he's just a, he's somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to fill him up a little bit more. I don't have a lot of brake fluid left, so you must please make sure that you've got plenty of brake fluid available. At least two bottles for this. There we go. He's just going to fill him up a bit more than he's supposed to. He's got more than the max amount. That should do it for now. We'll keep an eye on that. We're going to put this cap back on. Okay guys, what we have here is a trusty um, brake fluid bottle. This is the guy who's going to catch the brake fluid. And we have our pipe which fits on there. I think it's approximately about a 5 mm pipe. And this pipe must be submerged in the actual brake fluid and you must have some brake fluid in the bottle as you can see the pipe is I hope you can see that the pipe is below the level of the brake fluid in the bottle and we're just going to attach this to the nipple which I know you can't see right now but once you're doing it yourself you'll see that it's very simple to attach it just make sure it stays on there and then we're going to take our eight spanner use the ring side put that on and what that looks like is something like this. Here we go, that's what it looks like. You've got your ring spanner here, and then you've got your eight more, uh, eight more ring spanner here, and you've got your pipe attached as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this, we're gonna open him up, which of course is, is lefty, is loosey, and we're gonna bleed him like that. So I'm just checking that he works, yes he works. You don't have to tighten this nipple up, uh, like uh, hectically, just do it gentle, it's like 8 Newton meters, which is like hand tight. Right. Okay. Pump! Right. Pump! And as you can see, the fluid is getting clear and without bubbles. Pump! Right. So now it looks like it's clear. Uh, there's still a bubble in there, I can see him. Okay, pump! Pump! Stole some bubbles. You can see them there. Pump! Yeah, that's better. I can still see some bubbles. Pump!
pump. I still see some bubbles. Pump. Oh, much better now. I think we'll stop there. That's good. Now we're just going to check our brake fluid quickly. We've got to make sure that the brake fluid is still, is still good in the reservoir. If I look at him, yeah, he hasn't dropped too much. He hasn't dropped too much. So uh, I'm going to just leave him like that for now. And I think we can tighten up here and close that off. Okay guys, we've gone and done all the bleeding of the brakes all the way around. Now I'm not going to show you that in the video because it's basically the same thing all the way, all the way around. But what is important is to note that there is actually a bleeding sequence. Now depending upon what you did and how much brake fluid came out, um, in, in some cases you're just doing one, one uh, of the brake uh, uh, circuits, you can actually just you know bleed that one and that will be the end of it. If you're doing a brake line clean out, then you want to pump out all of the actual fluid and you're going to do that in a certain sequence if you're doing a complete uh, brake bleed or you're doing a fluid replacement. Now the, I'll put the except of the actual uh, sequence on the screen here. So this is actually what the manufacturer specifies on how you need to follow this procedure. So remember guys that there is additional information available um, on the member section of the channel. I go more in depth in the bleeding of the brakes as well as the replacement of the hydraulic piston all the procedures that you have to follow to make the job a successful one okay guys we've bled the brakes all around it's the same procedure at every single um brake uh, shoe the brake the brake pads in front exactly the same procedure guys um so we've done it all the way around now we're back at the the problematic uh, brake drum and we're just going to check him now to make sure that everything is still in order there's no leaks or anything like that on it and uh, after that we're going to put the wheels back on and then just check our handbrake see what the adjustment is and what we need to do from there okay. let's see okay fantastic yeah looks dry dry everything looks good let's check the back no leaks on the back i can see clearly here now you guys can't see it but there's no leaks on the back here so that means we've installed our uh, new cylinder successfully yeah that's just very clean right now that's why it's shining like that but there's no actual leaks very quickly if you press on the boots like this you'll see very quickly if there's fluid in it but yeah everything looks good here so i'm going to close this up now we're going to put the wheels back on and then we're going to check our handbrake adjustment okay let's close this up don't lose them okay, so what we're going to do now is just to check um, firstly are the wheels turning yes they are turning I'm just going to pull this guy out here the wheel is turning free that's great I'll check the other one on the other side is turning so what we're going to do is we're going to pull up the handbrake slowly and you'll hear it clicking as you pull it up so I'm going to call out now and then we're going to see what the tension level is one click there's already drag on the wheel. Let's check the other one. Very little drag on this wheel. Very little drag. Okay. Two clicks. Now we're at number two. Very little drag on there. Yeah. I can't even move him, he's, he's tight, a lot of drag on you. So what we know now is that that wheel on that side, the sitting needs to be changed on that side. Uh, that is two clicks and this one is taking already. And that one on the other side is not taking. So what we're going to do now is we're going to adjust that wheel on that side. Okay, so we're going to remove this side's drum now. Just have patience guys, and you will get them off, now. 
Okay, guys, the next step we're going to do is to uh, adjust the adjusting wheel, which sits here. That's your adjusting wheel there. Now, the way we do that is we're going to tap him down. And what you just want to do is, you'll notice he's, he's, he's actually stuck on this plate over here. Now, you just want to knock him down one or two. We're going to start with two. That means that these brake shoes are going to push out a bit more. And that's it. So you just tap him. Put your hand on top. One. Two. Two. Go. That should do it. I think I'm going to go three. If it's too much, we can always turn him back. There we go. Three. Just make sure that your plate is back up on top of him. Just give your brake shoes a tap back in position. Right. So before we close up anything here, I'm just going to take some of my uh, trusty uh, anti-seize grease. Uh, this is the one that I use. It's a copper anti-seize grease. And for all the moving surfaces, I want to renew the, the surfaces where this brake shoe scrape against in your notes. So we're just going to put some copper and this is grease on the surfaces that move, which is here and here and at the bottom as well in the same locations. Um, it's good to do that. It will save your, uh, your uh, shoes and your, your whole drum mechanism as well. What we're just going to do is, just going to push it back like that. Put some of it in here. Squeeze it out. That's it. On there. Same story here. Let's push them out. Put some copper grease there. That's it. And at the bottom, we're going to do exactly the same thing. You can't see it, but it's being done. There we go. Yeah, done. When you, re when you remove the whole assembly, it's much easier to do it. But in this case, I'm just going to do that because it's, uh, it's uh, necessary to do it now while you can, while you are here. Okay, let's put on our brake drum again. And what I also do is I put some brake anti-seize grease here. I also put some anti-seize grease here, just to stop that drum from binding with this hub over here. You can rub it here as well if you want to. I prefer to do it like this. I've been in a situation where the wheel was actually stuck to the, to the hub. And the drum was also stuck. Right, let's line it up, put this back on. Okay guys, we're going to do the next uh, uh, click test again. Here we go. One click. Oh yeah, definitely some more tension there now. I'm just going to check the other one on the other side. Yeah, he's also got tension. He's got drag on him at least. Okay, two clicks. Yeah. That's it, that's better. Okay, give me three clicks. Oh, three clicks is, is tight. Is tight. Oh, yeah, you can't even move. Okay, so what we need to do is we can go one more click on that side then I think we should be fine. Yeah, let's do one more click on that side and then I think we should be fine. So one final thing guys, we need to check our level. If we have a look, we can see the other way. Yeah, he's in between minimum and maximum. So we're just gonna top him up now. Okay, here we are. We're now at the maximum. I hope, it's, I hope you can see it. Uh, looks like it, yeah. Okay, here we go, done. 
Okay guys, uh, that's it. We've come to the end of the video. Um, yeah, once again, I think um, this is just a good lesson in, in maintenance. I think it's important to inspect your, your brake cylinders. If you haven't changed them in a long time, and I'm talking about like two, a year, two years or so, then maybe it's time to inspect them and actually replace them so that you know you're not going to have any issues uh, along the way. Uh, guys, I'd like to thank you for uh, watching the video and um, please uh, remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And of course, the members section is also there guys um yeah you know the member section has got a lot more in-depth information that i can't always cover when i'm filming because so there's so much going on when i'm filming so when i uh, i'm sitting down having a quiet moment i'll remember certain things and i'll remember that i wanted to go in depth for those things and that you'll find in the member section and, uh, and i'm pretty sure that that can be uh, really beneficial for you and i want to thank the, the the current members of the channel for supporting me i do appreciate it as i always say um you know nobody is uh, sponsoring me for any of this none of these companies not the ever uh, ever on or pod corp or any or opal anybody is actually sponsoring me for this so uh, at the end of the day um, i rely very much on uh, my subscribers to for the for their the contributions as well as being members of the channel which really greatly helps me so guys if you've got any questions or comments you'd like to make uh, please leave them in the comment section and i'll see you in the next video